now is Paul Delaney. He's Professor Emeritus of Physics and Astronomy at York University. Paul, no tie? No eclipse tie? It's ready to go, Marcia. I just am going to be wearing it all day, so I figured, okay, I'm, I'm going to go casual for the moment. <laughs> okay, go casual for now. Um, it's too early for a tie. <laughs> So, Paul, yes. we've talked so much about this eclipse. There is eclipse mania. You know that. We have to pause for a moment and have you explain to our viewers exactly what is happening in the sky today. So this is celestial mechanics in action. The moon in its orbit around the Earth today is going to pass in front of the sun. Depending on where you are in North America, where you are in Canada, you may experience a partial eclipse where the moon blocks part of the sun, or for those lucky folks, and you indicated where some of those folks are, Hamilton and so on, you will see the disk of the moon completely block the sun. And what that means is that around about 3.20 this afternoon, twilight is going to descend unexpectedly for two, three, four minutes, again, depending on exactly where you are, and of course, clouds dependent, but the sun will be literally extinguished. The stars will come out, the halo, what we call the corona around the sun will become visible. It will be a spectacular scene that will really confuse uh, the bird life and the animal life something to be experienced if you can. So scientists will be gathering some really important information today. What will be, we be learning from this eclipse potentially, Paul? Well, it might sound strange, but we are still learning a lot about the sun, the outer corona, which becomes only visible during total solar eclipses, the way the sun influences the Earth's atmosphere. NASA will be shooting sounding rockets into the atmosphere. Others will be monitoring literally the diameter of the sun. There's a number of things that can only be observed easily when literally the sun isn't there. And that's what will happen this afternoon. When the sun is blocked by the moon, all sorts of things, the chromosphere, the corona, things in the upper atmosphere, things that we normally don't have access to will become accessible for a few minutes. NASA and a lot of scientists are out there in force to try and capture that data for those few minutes. So even if it is overcast or partly cloudy where you are, it will still go dark? It will still feel like the middle of the night? Is that what you're telling us? Not the middle of the night, sort of deep twilight. It won't get pitch black if you're in the totality path. But once you take away the bright, what we call the photospheric surface of the sun, you're only left with the corona. And that is much, much fainter. And so it will feel like evening twilight, about half an hour after sunset. Too dark to read, for example. But certainly uh, the, the hue of the light will be sufficient, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that birds, animals will think it's time to go to bed. And on that note, Paul, and I know you're an astronomist, you're not a zoologist, um, in terms of animal behavior, what can we expect? Uh, well, as I said, they'll get very confused. The, the cows will, during totality, think that it is time to go back to the milking sheds. The birds will think it's time to uh, get themselves back into their nest. Dogs and cats will react as if it was sunset uh, and into twilight. So it's not going to be strange behavior. They're just going to think that it's a little early, but nonetheless, the sun's gone. It's time to go to bed. So that's the sort of uh, behavior you should expect to witness. And this can be best done, obviously, outside. I can't stress enough the, the importance of being outside and experiencing this. You can't get that experience from a TV monitor, no offense, uh, from a cell phone and so on. You've got to be outside to witness it. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I've heard so many people describe watching or experiencing uh, the eclipse as something sort of spiritual or transformative. Yes, it is. I've seen three total solar eclipses so far. I'm only going to see 99.7% today. It won't be a total eclipse uh, here in Toronto. But nonetheless, that will by itself be a very interesting experience. If you've never seen totality and you have the opportunity to be in the eclipse path, then you should go and do it. It, it really is a phenomenal event. Obviously, you've got to be careful. Uh, during the partial phases, 
the sun is still visible. And it doesn't matter whether or not it's 10% of the sun, 20% of the sun. The sun is a dangerous object when it is in the sky if you choose to look at it, which you should never do, ever. So don't look at the sun without the appropriate solar glasses. But during totality, the sun is not there. So now you can look at the halo, the corona around the sun with safety, but only during totality. Okay, but just to be super clear then, Paul, <clears throat> you can still go outside. You don't, just don't oh, yes, look, if absolutely. you don't have glasses, it's still safe to be outside. Just don't look up. It's no more dangerous today than it is any other day. The sun is in the sky. We are aware of it when you're driving around, when you're playing outside. No different today. You just might be tempted to look towards the sun because you have heard there is, <clears throat> excuse me, there is an eclipse. Don't look at the sun if the sun is in the sky. But when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun in that path of totality, it is safe to look in that direction. Paul Delaney is a professor emeritus of physics and astronomy at York University. Paul, so glad you could be with us this morning. Enjoy the experience this afternoon. Oh, I will indeed. Clear skies to everybody.